right, so today we're gonna be 3D printing a quad frame. This quad frame is 3D printed in six pieces, the forearms and the upper and bottom piece. So let's get started with the print. Alrighty, so the quadcopter has finished. We have all the pieces here, and they are all have still yet to be cleaned up. And for cleaning them, I usually just use a simple razor blade. Razor blades are essential when you have 3D prints. They're just absolutely essential. So I'm just gonna clean them up, make them look nice, Alrighty, so the pieces have finished. So now time to assemble them. So, how are we gonna assemble these? Well, lots of time, no. <laughs> so I have a bag of bolts and screws and stuff somewhere in here, here we go. Oh, that was fast. So now it's time to assemble the quadcopter frame. And the way that I believe these assemble is each piece here has a one and a two, so if we look up here, I believe the two goes right up there, like so, and on here, the one goes through there, like that. And I'm just using some bolts that I had hanging around, so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the bolts in. Right now I only have one bolt in, so these move around. So I'll need to tighten those up, and that will be the quadcopter frame. I, I can see all the screws, there's three screws per arm. Ah, oh, beautiful design in my opinion. I really like it. It almost looks like a Frisbee, it almost toss it. Definitely the design of the future. And you know what amazes me the most is the bolts fit. But usually with some designs, they get designing them and they forget that holes need to be a little larger in their 3D model than in real life because for whatever reason, holes are always, your part is always just a little bigger in real life. And it will always be that way due to the fact because plastic swells and shrinks and these type of things. But all right, that is the quadcopter frame. Right there, is that not awesome? What's interesting about this is we're printing a new technology on a new technology printer. So, in the future, drones printed on printers. So, alrighty, so I went to start installing the electronics and slowly realized that we're gonna need some extra components to 3D print it first. <laughs> the first being some sort of stand for the quadcopter. I made a mistake of just thinking that I would just mount the lithium battery on the bottom of the quadcopter and that would just kind of be the stand. The problem with that is LiPo batteries are explosive if punctured. So <laughs> protection of this thing might be a little important. I'm gonna end up printing some sort of stand that will help hold the quadcopter up as well as sort of protect the LiPo battery. Um, with that in mind too, I also noticed that I'm gonna need some protection as well for the brain of our quadcopter, and this is the NAS32 chip that we're gonna be using. I don't know if I wanna just mount it right in the open like that. I think it would be a better decision if I 3D print some sort of case for this as well, since it is a fragile piece. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and print some stand for this, and a case for the NACE 32. All 
ready. The pieces have finished. We've got our two stand pieces, which looks like we can fit our LiPo battery right in the middle here, as well as act as a stand to keep the battery off the ground, which in my opinion is very cool. So with that, let's go ahead and get these parts cleaned up and mount them on. Alrighty, so I got the pieces cleaned up and ready to go. Got all the supports cleaned off of them, cleaned off of them and everything. So now it's time to install them. So let's get started. Boom, done. There we are. Now it's officially looking more like a quadcopter. Oh yes, look at that. Beautiful, and it has a nice little square so that we can actually fit our battery in just like this, right there, so that it's a nice and protected when the drone is flying around. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is incredible. I, this design is brilliant. I love this design. It's a beautiful modification done to the mini wheel quadcopter frame. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the NACE32 case. So to do that, let's get some bolts here, some screws. Oh, now this situation happens every once in a while. Uh, usually when 3D printing, you design a hole the size of the bolt and then it comes out a little smaller than it should. Uh, so you always, when you design holes, just make them a little bigger than the size bolt that you want it to fit. And if that happens, it's really simple to fix. Just take a drill bit, just run it through the hole like this just like that, and then your screw should fit beautifully in there, just like that. That's all you have to do, very simple. Alrighty, the NACE32 case is on. Hopefully, these are the last 3D prints that we need to do for this quadcopter. Here's a closer up view of the quadcopter. If you look at it here, um, you've got the NACE32 case that we've installed onto the top here, as well as the battery holder and the stand piece all in one right on the bottom there. I think it's very, uh, very light. It doesn't seem that heavy. Good because it needs to be light. And it looks hefty too. It looks like it can handle some chucks arounds and crashes and stuff. I love the NACE32 case. Um, out of all the, all the prints that I've done, uh, I've never seen a design that works so well. Like, this NACE32 case, I was just like dry fitting everything and it fits together really well, surprisingly. Time for electronics. So, we're gonna do that now. What we have is our, our nays, our brain for our quadcopter, our receiver, very important, we need that receiver, four ESCs, also important, batteries, propellers, and connectors for the batteries. With that in mind, we pretty much have everything. There's only one thing we're missing, and that's the motors. And I do have motors, they're just not in a place you would expect them to be. In fact, well, I think it's better if I just show you. Yes, a DJI Phantom, and this was a DJI Phantom Vision Plus. You might be thinking, why am I taking a part of DJI Phantom drone? Well, unfortunately, there is a big story behind this one and a very sad story. I was flying it and the next day I wasn't, unfortunately, the inner components of this thing have been kaputsa. We don't exactly know what's wrong, to be honest. I have done research beyond research. I have reinstalled software. I have done a billion things. And this drone has never worked after the dreadful crash that it took. So, with that in mind, we are be subtracting the motors out of this thing and putting it on the quadcopter. Now, it's just up to soldering the components together and putting this thing together. So let's get started. First and very first thing I'm going to do is solder on the pins to the NAS32. Now this NAS32 comes with some wire, which is important. This will help connect the NAS32 to the receiver. With that in mind, we're gonna push that aside. We have our actual NAS itself. Let's 
go ahead and get rid of the boxes. We don't really need anything in there. So this is the actual naze itself. Um, and then we have a bunch of pins that we need to solder on to the naze. And that's what we'll be doing now. Alrighty, so the pins are all soldered. So now that the pins are all soldered in, I'm gonna go ahead and install the board into the actual case. All right, the first component is installed. So before we go any further, there's one thing we should do, which we kind of forgot to do before we started getting away soldering on this thing, is to actually install the software on the naze before we start plugging things in. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the software. Next, we need to install our receiver. So our receiver is now wired to our naze. So now our next step is to start soldering and wiring the ESCs. And now these ESCs, we won't be using all of the wires, only for motor one, which is down here. And this one's gonna provide the power. The rest I'm going to snip and keep nothing but the white wire, which is our signal wire. Now that we got that all done, let's go ahead and start unsoldering the motors. All right, after all the motors removed, let's go ahead and pull that away. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the ESCs in. Alrighty, so that's where each individual ESC will go. I may say look absolutely beautiful. It's already starting to look like a quadcopter. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install the motors. Alrighty, so I got all the motors installed. So I have some soldering left to do. Alrighty, so I think that we got most everything on. Um, there are a few things we need to do. We need to calibrate the NACE32, or in other words, plug in the NACE32, make sure our motors are spinning the correct way. All right, let's go ahead and test motor one, which is over here. That is spinning the correct way. Motor two, which should be over here. Good, that's spinning the correct way. Motor three, which should be over here. That's spinning the correct way. Motor four. And that's spinning the correct way. All right, it appears all our motors are spinning the correct way. So I'll put shrink wrap on these and tidy these up. I think that concludes it. And I went ahead and mounted the battery in there. But I think the quadcopter is finally done. Man, that took forever. I mean, so much soldering, so much work, and I think it finally is complete, the quadcopter. Beautiful, beautiful quadcopter. I'm very excited to fly it. So let's put the props on and go out and test it. I think all the props are on and they are ready to go. All right, so let's take it outside and test fly it. Yeah, I'm pumped and excited. Let's go test it. Ready? Yep. Disarm and we're good. Test flight successful. Alrighty, thanks for watching. And if you have something you want to see printed, definitely request it. We'll see you next week.